Hi there. In today's video, I'll be performing a Mars mod on this Yesu FT60. In a previous episode, episode 15, I gave a high level overview of what the Mars cap program is, as well as reasons why you may or may not want to perform the Mars mod on your radio. So if you're interested in learning more about that, then you can check out episode 15 and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. In that episode, I mentioned the Yesu FT60 requires disassembling the radio to perform the mod. However, there are some other radios out there that can have their frequencies unlocked through uh, software. If you're not comfortable with opening up your radio and modifying the circuit board, then don't attempt it. If you make a mistake, you could risk bricking the radio where it ends up in an unusable state. If you look at the specifications of this FT60, we can see it's programmed from the factory to transmit on VHF from 144 MHz through 148 MHz, and on UHF from 430 MHz through 450 MHz. The Mars mod will give the radio additional transmit capabilities on VHF between 137 MHz through 174 MHz, and on UHF between 420 MHz through 470 MHz. A couple of things to note, the mod I'm performing is specific to this radio. So if you have another Yesu model that you want to mod, then you'll need to research the procedure for that specific radio. Also for the FT60, once the mod is complete, it will delete the previous programming and I'll need to reinstall my code plug. So if you happen to have an FT60 and you do this, then be prepared for the mod to reset the radio. I'm going to get started on the disassembly of the FT60 and once that's done, I'll show you how to perform the mod on the circuit board. Okay, I have the radio disassembled and to perform the mod I'll need to remove a resistor that's mounted on the circuit board and I'll show you what that looks like. And it's kind of hard to see but Let's see if I can get this to kind of focus a little bit. Okay, the resistor is actually right there. And I, I know it's very hard to see because it is uh, pretty small in the circuit board, but um, that's the part that I'll need to remove. And while researching how to do this, the recommendations were to remove that resistor from the board by using the uh, tip of a razor blade uh, like this one to pry it off. Another recommendation was using a soldering iron if you have a small enough tip. Um, I don't have a small enough soldering iron tip to get in there so I'm gonna try the razor blade method or see if I have another instrument that's small enough to um, actually pry that off. Again, this uh, procedure is specific to the FT60, and I'm going to take my time doing this. After I get it removed, I'll show you what that looks like, but I'm going to take a step away from this table, bring this uh, circuit board over to my workbench, and uh, figure out what tools... I'm going to use to remove this if the uh, razor blade doesn't work. But uh, I'll be back after I get it removed. Okay, I have the component removed. And I know it's difficult to see, but this is what it looks like without the uh, surface mount resistor. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus and I'll point it out to you. So right there is where I removed the part and I took some pictures and I'll put those up in a moment so you can get a better view of the circuit board and the uh, location of the surface mount resistor and while I was uh, 
figuring out how to remove this thing, I was looking at my other tools and I didn't really feel comfortable with using the razor blade. So I happen to have um, some of these little clay modeling instruments that I got from Harbor Freight. And I felt that these were going to give me a little bit more precision than the tip of the razor blade. And uh, it worked out pretty well. Uh, I was able to get the surface mount resistor off fairly quickly without too much resistance. So um, I'm glad that worked out the way that it did. Anyway, I'm going to put the radio back together and confirm that it powers back on. Hopefully there aren't any issues and then reprogram it and then I will be back. Okay, I have the radio put back together and my code plug is reinstalled. I can confirm the mod worked and the radio functions as expected. So one thing to note when you put your radio back together is the FT60 has some gaskets that keep out dust and water and you want to make sure the gaskets are seated properly during reassembly and those gaskets are along the uh, side of the radio basically it goes all the way around the seam and then there are some gaskets underneath these knobs and uh, that's really all there is to it. It's actually a pretty uh, easy radio to take apart and I'm glad that the Mars mod worked. And just to reiterate, I, I know I said this already, but if you do decide to mod your radio, you want to be very careful. If you're not confident in taking a radio apart and modifying the circuit board, then don't do it. Because if you um, do this procedure incorrectly, you'll permanently damage your radio. If you mod your radio and you accidentally nick another component with your instruments, uh, that could damage it as well and it could just be totally on accident and you may not even realize it until you get the radio put back together and uh, you try and operate it again. So uh, be very, very careful. I don't want to see anyone accidentally break their radio, but um, this uh, Mars mod seemed to work and I'm happy with the results. So. Anyway, uh, that's all for now, and thank you for watching.